Hello and welcome back to another Cars and Coffee. It's the first Saturday of the month, which means we are in the sweltering heat of summer and a new theme, Mopar. Which is why I'm starting out with Britain. We're going to do a bit of a European tour first, through all the different countries of Europe. And Britain had some pretty interesting cars, a bit lackluster once in a while, but the new McLaren GT is a nice touch, even if it does look suspiciously like a C8 Corvette slash Ferrari 296. Not very original, but a nice car to see nonetheless. Yeah, one of the uh, late 80s, early 90s Rolls Royces, although I much prefer this than the Rolls Royce, which sounds weird, but I like seeing different cars, and the Austin 1100 is definitely a very different car. Now, you might have noticed that that Rolls Royce is in a different location. There just so happened to be a car show going on at my work. And there wasn't much interesting, but what is interesting, I included in here. Now, there were the usual British road shows. Not quite as many triumphs as last time. There was a bit of a triumph fever going on at the previous month's event. But still, the TR5, TR6, and the TR7 Coupe is a nice addition instead of the usual convertibles that I see. And the very... Bright yellow paint job, single with the boxy theme. An uh, old Lotus Esprit, sort of like the um, late 80s Bond, early 80s Bond one, I should say. I This is um, a very special vehicle. I, I admire the pure track focus right of it. The massive aero kit stripped down interior. I think it's road legal. I saw it drive up. Whether or not it's actually road legal is another story for debate. But you gotta admire the wing taller than the car. So we move on to Italy, the next stop in our European tour, and there's the usual Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati. was a nice touch, but Lamborghini, usually the showstoppers, and they make another fantastic appearance in the event tour SVJ. It can be a bit common, you know? Let's see some variety in my SVJs. Got the Mercy, the previous generation from the event tour, and the previous generation from the Mercy, the Diablo SV. I always loved this Diablo in yellow. I kind of prefer it with the black wing at the end, but a Diablo SV is a Diablo SV. I'm not going to complain. Next stop is Germany, the other one of the Axis powers. And, again, some repeats like the fantastic AMG GT3 car. I know it's not an actual GT3 car, but it sure looks like one. This is an actual race car, not just a homage. It's fully stripped down. It has a clock in it. A little dial one to tell you how fast or how long you've been on your uh, stint. And then their usual excellent, if not a little bit bland looking, uh, Super Saloons with the E63S and the new M5 Competition in the Porsche Taycan. So I was going to talk about a Horizon 5 video. But I, again, you know, usual in estate guy, loving seeing some estates. There was the E63 AMG estate that I didn't get a picture of because it was driving. But the RS6 was here again and... Well, you gotta love some fast estates. This is not as fast as those, but I would actually prefer it, kind of. Because A, it's in my price range, and V is a Volvo with a um, turbocharged 5-cylinder, which is awesome. Also awesome, Saabs! We actually had some Saabs here, which is always nice, from the 9.5 to the iconic 900 turbo. Great looking car. Weird hood, but if it's not weird, then it's not really Saab, is it? Not as much Scandinavian representation as I would have liked in the car, show you my fondness for them. But we move on to Japan with Lexus, yet new ISF uh, Sport S, whatever the hell it's called. There's a really long name at the end. But this one, kind of like it. I kind of like the Hyundai Elantra N. Not so sold on the face, but the rest of it, I think, actually looks pretty good. And if you're going to do an SUV... That's how you do an SUV, the Forester STI, fantastic machine, or the other end of the spectrum, more off-road focused, the Toyota FJ Land Cruiser, still iconic and rugged all these years later. Same thing with the Celica GT, not quite the Celica Supra, but, you know, it looks to part, it's very much in the vein of that. There are actually quite a few Toyotas from the um, newer ones, like the GR86, or the old ones, like the MR2. But, no Supra, and I'm kind of okay with that. We've had a lot of Supras, they're great, but, you know, they're a bit generic, and we'll see more interesting stuff, like this crazy modified drift spec Scion FRS, is, I'll take that over a base model Supra any day of the week. And you know what? 
as great as they are, and trust me, I love the K cars, they were not my favorite Japanese vehicle in the show. It speaks volumes to the quality of this next car. I'm talking about the Datsun 510. Yes! Full-on underdog killer of the Trans Am series in the 70s. Fantastic and mint, pristine example. I love it. It's one of my favorite cars of the show. One of my favorite cars I've seen all year. Just the cleanness of it was fantastic. But now we got into the big section of this video. This is a Mopar-themed event, and there were lots of American cars in attendance. There's usually a lot, but this was especially prominent, ranging from the old Dodge A100 to the slightly older, but not quite as old, Dodge Shelby Daytona Z. Fantastic underrated car. This was a Dodge Dakota, not really noteworthy, except for the fact, have you seen the size of the turbo and the intercooler? It's bigger than most hatchbacks. I mean, it's faster than this, and this is a pretty fast truck, the Ram SRT-10 with the full-on Viper engine, so that speaks volumes to just how insanely quick I imagine that turbocharged Dakota was. And there were a lot of Vipers, not really many noteworthy in my opinion. I love the Viper, but if we see a lot of them, I'm not going to take any pictures of them. This was a final edition for the SR3, I think is what it was, and I think it looks fantastic with the Gran Turismo livery on it. And it's a rare car, and I always like seeing it. It was number 143 out of the production run of the final edition. And yes, there were a lot. This is Mopar, so I know it's like the whole brand, but the Hemi was especially prominent, whether it be Barracudas or Dusters or especially Chargers and Challengers. If you were a fan, especially this fantastic Charger 500, sort of the precursor to the Daytona and the Superbird, Sadly, none of those in attendance. Those are about half a million bucks apiece. But seeing any Charger is always going to be the iconic split window. Whether it be the iconic split grille or the more modern A-body platform versions, which are much more aggressive and in your face. And you can even see them parked side by side. So you can see the little subtle differences between the Barracuda and the Challenger. And I kind of have been growing to appreciate the first and second gen Barracudas a lot more after that last video that I made. And they have been really growing on me. I didn't like them originally, but seeing them now, excellent vehicles. Not quite as excellent as the full-on 440s um, Super B Coronets, but, you know, still solid. Still solid. And who can forget, you got your cop shocks, cop brake, cop motors, cop tires, in the form of the Dodge Coronet Pursuit. So this is sort of like the actual one that the Blue Sellers vehicle is based off of, so if it worked. They did actually have the sheriff show up. So a new Challenger supplied from your local heroin dealer is what the tagline was for this sheriff spec Challenger. And a one of three, if, I, if the guy is correct, Hearst Special Edition Challenger. So they only made, this is 2019, and in this color, so they're finding a bunch of clarifications and clarifications. I mean, some movie cars in attendance, you can't have a little part of them without fantastic. the Deuce of Hazard General Lee. This is the 2005 version, which is why it's still intact. You can actually see the reinforcements in the chassis so it didn't die on the jump. And of course, the Dodge Dart Super Stock LO23. One of the fastest and coolest drag cars ever made. I don't care what you say. I love the Thunderbolt as anybody else would. But the super stock Dodge Dart is unequivocally one of my favorite muscle cars of all time. I'm so glad they actually brought a real one there. And it was not just Dodges, despite being the central theme. There were a whole bunch of cars, ranging from the classic style earlier to this Chrysler that is just... 20 miles long with the crazy fins. Feels like it's more like a Cadillac DeVille, but it was made in the period of the Cadillac DeVille. They even was an estate version, albeit it was a Plymouth, but still, seeing fins on an estate car is a bit odd, especially because they're sort of jutting out to the side. But, you know, an estate car is an estate car. I'm not going to criticize. And on the more modern end, we got some time attack cars in the form of the C5 Chevy Corvettes. Again, I guess it must live at the track because I don't think that would be road legal without being pulled over every five seconds to check for your registration. And yeah, there were a few Mustangs, including I think a replica GT350 based on the front bumper. It doesn't look like an actual GT350. You can see a real one, 
right here, and it's very different looking, so I think that was a homage, but a good homage, but a homage nonetheless, like the RS200 from the previous time around. GT500 KR convertible, although nothing beats the true king of the Shelby line, the 427 Cobra, even if it is a super performance. Still great. Don't care what you say. And yeah, there were a few other mismatches here and there. But, you know, dragsters and fox bodies and Camaros, they're all well and good. But I like different cars. Cars like the Foose Mustang. You don't see very many Fooses around. It's not my favorite looking paint job. But, you know, it's nice to see again. I, I like to see different cars, rarer cars like the Onor, like the Foose. Like a Lincoln. Yeah, that's actually a Lincoln. Someone said, you know what? Lincoln LS, I want to make you into a performance car. But regardless of all of that, regardless of the Dodge Dart, this was my favorite vehicle in show, the Little Red Express, simply because I'd never seen it before. I've seen a few Dart LO23s, but a Little Red Express and the history behind it, the fastest car, American car, in the quarter mile at the time, despite being a pickup truck and using the loophole of the rules, it was fantastic seeing that in there. You, you really should look it up, because... Explaining would take way too long, but the Little Red Express, truly underrated piece of Americana. And I love seeing it at this show. I know there's not going to be many sunny days left in the coming months as we move further and further towards fall and winter, but at the rate these shows are, that's going to be over in no time. They're fantastic.